Hi, I'm Michelle Bege with a look at what's happening in Latin America now. But first, our news trivia. The UN Secretary General visited Antarctica last week. Which South American president accompanied him? We'll have the answer later. We start this week in Peru, where the president has been blamed for the deaths of street protesters. My colleague Dan Collins has more. Michelle, Peru's Attorney General Patricia Benavides filed a constitutional complaint against President Dina Boluarte on Monday. It follows an 11-month investigation into the deaths of more than 50 demonstrators during anti-government protests at the beginning of the year. In a televised address, Boluarte described the move as a, quote, despicable political maneuver. The president has accused Benavides of using the complaint as a distraction from her own legal problems. The attorney general filed the complaint against the president just hours after she herself had been accused of leading a corruption ring. Her advisor was arrested following a raid by a special team of anti-corruption prosecutors. They alleged that Attorney General Benavides dropped investigations against lawmakers in exchange for them appointing her allies to key posts in the judiciary. Benavides, who denies any wrongdoing, has fired the prosecutor who made the allegations against her team and has so far resisted calls for her resignation. The standoff between Boluarte and Benavides is the latest twist in Peru's political turmoil, which has seen six presidents in as many years. Guyana and Venezuela are disputing a mineral and forest-rich territory. It's called Esequibo. It's administered by the former British colony Guyana, but claimed by Venezuela. The disagreement reached a high point this week when the president of Guyana, Irfan Ali, presided over the raising of the national flag on Mount Pacarampa in the Esequibo jungle region. Venezuela's president, Nicolás Maduro, has organized a December 3rd referendum asking Venezuelans to support annexing the region. The International Court of Justice is expected to deliver a verdict at the end of this week. Important to note, the dispute began when ExxonMobil discovered enormous oil reserves off the coast of Esequibo in 2015. Check out the thousands of Brazilians who showed up to support far-right former President Jair Bolsonaro in Sao Paulo. The demonstrators are demanding the removal of the Supreme Court justice, presiding over the attempted coup case from January 8 in Brasilia. Pro-Bolsonaro rioters vandalized and tried to seize the capital in an open display of defiance. In the first verdicts over the riots, the Supreme Court sentenced three defendants to heavy jail terms, 14 and 17 years of prison time after being found guilty. And in Panama, the country's top court ruled against a lucrative copper mine deal made with a Canadian company. The deal gave the company a 20-year right to mine in Panama with an option to extend for another 20 years. In return, the company would pay 375 million U.S. dollars in annual revenue to Panama. Opponents regard the terms of the contract as too generous to the company. Citizens have been protesting for weeks. The Supreme Court called the deal unconstitutional. President Laurentino Cortizo said the country will abide by the court ruling. The next step for the company is the long and unpredictable road of international arbitration. Now let's check out what stories we're following for next week. All eyes are on Argentina as we follow the new president-elect libertarian economist Javier Milei. Since being elected this November, he has started preparations for his swearing-in on December 10th. This week, he was in the United States for a private visit where he and several members of his team were said to have met with international lending officials like the International Monetary Fund, as well as U.S. diplomats. Millet said during his campaign that he would abolish the Argentine peso and use the U.S. dollar instead. Millet also made headlines for inviting Brazil's president, Luis Inácio Lula da Silva, to his inauguration. The president-elect had harshly criticized Lula, calling him an angry communist during his campaign, but now he's promised to build an alliance. Millet also thanked President Xi Jinping for a letter congratulating him. And now the answer to our news trivia. The answer is C. 
The United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres visited Antarctica along with Chilean President Gabriel Boric. The purpose was to observe the impact of the climate crisis at the southern tip of the world. The three-day visit took place in the lead-up to the COP28 climate talks in December. Guterres said urgent action is needed at the conference where countries will address their commitments to lowering emissions of planet-warming gases. And that's it for this week. We'll see you again soon on Latin America Now.